A call for unity. The 20th century, a time of no peace, 100 years of conflict and war. the hundreds of millions of people left homeless, crippled, or dead. Violence and oppression still prevail across the world as a whole in this, the 21st century. Many innocent people are suffering because of tensions between different nations. Far too many people across the world are too scared even to leave their homes. Every day, hundreds of people learn that friends or relatives, their mothers or fathers, have been injured or died in fighting. Yet despite all this, some people are still striving to establish a climate of conflict instead of solidarity and mutual aid between civilizations. It is impossible to regard such efforts as legitimate and remain silent in the face of them. It is obvious that any clash between civilizations will lead to a terrible disaster for all mankind. One of the primary ways by which such a tragedy can be prevented is the strengthening of collaboration between civilizations. What is more, this is very easy because there are no profound differences between Islam and the Western world as some would have us believe. On the contrary, and as we shall be revealing with full supporting evidence in this documentary, there are many aspects in common between Islamic civilization and the Judeo-Christian culture that represents the foundation of Western civilization. So it will be a simple matter, on the basis of these common values, to collaborate to solve the problems of the world. Muslims' Attitudes Toward the People of the Book Islam regards both Judaism and Christianity as divine religions revealed by God. It recognizes their prophets and scriptures. It does not equate them with deniers or idolaters, but rather describes them as the people of the book and ensures that Muslims treat their beliefs with affection and respect. The subject is set out as follows in Surat al-Baqarah. I seek refuge in God from the accursed Satan. Alif La Mim, that is the book without any doubt. It contains guidance for those who guard against evil, those who believe in the unseen, perform prayer, and spend what we have provided for them. Those who believe in what has been sent down to you, what was sent down before you, and are certain about the hereafter. In the Quran, God reveals these earlier divinely revealed books as the pages of the prophet Abraham, the Torah revealed to the prophet Moses, the book of Psalms revealed to the prophet David, and the gospel revealed to the prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. However, apart from the Quran, the other books have gradually been corrupted for which reason some parts of them contain interpretations and provisions incompatible with the true faith. We can understand this corruption and tampering by analyzing the Quran. God draws attention to the moral errors of the people also among the people of the book, but this does not necessarily mean that the entirety of the people of the book is in error and unawareness. 
However, God reveals in a number of verses that there are people who are sincerely devoted to him among both Jews and Christians. They are not all the same. There is a community among the people of the book who are upright. They recite the signs of God throughout the night, and they prostrate. They believe in God in the last day, enjoin the right and forbid the wrong, and compete in doing good. They are among the righteous. You will not be denied the reward for any good thing you do. God knows those who guard against evil. It must not be forgotten that God knows every individual's heart. For that reason, the Muslim perspective must be that there may be many sincere believers among the peoples of the book. When this attitude is maintained, then it will be much easier to establish bonds based on love and respect among believers. Muslims' Love for the Prophet Moses and the Prophet Jesus The stories of the prophets related in the Quran tell of these holy individuals' intellectual struggle against the deniers and how they preach the oneness and existence of God. These narratives reveal details of their teachings about God and his religion, their ideological fight against unbelievers, and the responses they received from the people they invited to faith. The prophets' patience, selflessness, sincerity, fine thinking, and other superior human virtues made them ideal role models. Therefore, Muslims are aware that all prophets are holy persons chosen by our Lord and believe in all the prophets who have ever been sent. God sent the prophet Moses, peace be upon him, to the children of Israel, who were enslaved by Pharaoh at the time and gave him the book. The prophet Moses fought against Pharaoh and his close allies, as well as those hypocrites and people of weak faith from among his own nation, and proved himself a role model for believers by means of his submission to God and his faith. Patience, courage, selflessness, intelligence, motivation, and drive. Of course, Muslims have a sincere respect for and belief also in the prophet Moses a messenger with a close devotion to God. The prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, is introduced as the messenger and word of God in Quran in Surat and Nisa, verse 171. In the Quran, God reveals some enlightening information about his life and mission and the miracles. The prophet Jesus is praised in the Quran as follows. When the angel said, Mary, your Lord gives you good news of a word from him, his name is the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, of high esteem in this world and the hereafter, and one of those brought near. Of course, the most natural behavior for a Muslim is to love the prophet Jesus, who was chosen and respected in the sight of God and made so close to our Lord. Muslims are excitedly awaiting the coming of the Prophet Jesus, whose miracles for his people are described in the Quran, and who will return to earth in the end times to strive against deniers. The Prophet Muhammad's, peace be upon him, exemplary approach toward the people of the book. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the best role model for Muslims in every subject as well as in dealing with the people of the book. The Prophet Muhammad was always tender-hearted, just, and compassionate toward Jews and Christians. He wanted a climate based on love and reconciliation between Muslims and members of the other divine faiths. Agreements allowing Christians and Jews to live by their own faiths and maintain their existence as autonomous communities were made both during and after the time of our Prophet, and various guarantees were given them. One such example was our beloved Prophet's words written in the text of an agreement prepared for the Ibn Harris Ibn Kab, who is a Christian, and his people. The 
the religion, churches, lives, chastity, and goods of all Christians living in the East are under the protection of God and all believers. None of those living by Christianity will be forced to turn to Islam. If any Christian is subjected to any killing or injustice, Muslims must help him. After he dictated the above articles, he read the below verse. Only argue with the people of the book in the kindest way, except in the case of those of them who do wrong, saying, We believe in what has been sent down to us and what was sent down to you. Our God and your God are one, and we submit to him. Our Prophet's relationship with the people of the book is not only limited to these. His first wife, Hazrat Hadija's relative, Waraka ibn Nafal, who was an Astorian priest, had warm relations with our Prophet. The Messenger of God protected the lives and property of the people of the book in the settlements of Adra, Makna, Kaibar, Najran, and Akaba by giving them certificates. These certificates granted equal privileges to all of the people of the book and guaranteed their rights and freedoms. These certificates are one of the basic foundations of Muslims recognizing the people of the book's freedoms of faith and worship and guaranteeing their lives and property. There is such an example among our Prophet's loving and just attitude towards the people of the book that even today it is taught as a course in universities. This is the Constitution of Medina. When the believers emigrated from Mecca to Medina, disorder was generally prevalent in the region. There were bloody fights between the tribes. There was no sign of peace and safety. The population of the city was 10,000, 1,500 of which consisted of Muslims, 4,000 of Jews, and 4,500 was non-Muslim Arabs. Under these conditions, our Prophet decided to issue a constitution to secure an environment of peace and unity. The constitution of Medina provided the Christians and the Jews a setting where they can live their religion and trade freely. Another important aspect of this constitution was that if the Jews wished, they would be judged to their own holy book, the Torah. As is seen, as a requirement of the morality ordained by God, the Prophet Muhammad not only showed compassion and understanding towards the people of the book, but also taught his companions that those Jews and Christians living under the rule of Islam must be protected. the tranquility the people of the book experienced under Muslim rule. The oppression and violence directed by Byzantium against the Egyptian Monophysites and the Jacobian Christians, the horrors endured by those Jews and Orthodox Christians who found themselves in the path of the Catholic Crusaders, and the persecution endured by the Jews of Europe, as well as by the Muslims and Jews in Spain after the Reconquista, have never occurred on Muslim soil. Driven out of Spain and faced with more hardship in other countries where they sought refuge, many died of hunger and thirst at the gates of towns and cities they were not permitted to enter. Jews who boarded Genoese ships were either exploited or sold to pirates. Jews escaping Spanish tyranny found the peace and security they sought on Ottoman soil. Sultan Bayezid, who opened the gates of the empire to the Jews, issued a royal command to all provinces, stressing that Jews should be treated with care and affection. The royal command said, rather than turning back the Jews of Spain, they must be welcomed with all sincerity. Anyone behaving differently, mistreating the migrants or causing any harm to befall them will be punished by death. Sultan Bayezid is known to history as a religious man. 
and his hospitality and affection were based on the Quran's morality. One of the lands where people attained peace under Islamic rule is Palestine. Jewish and Christian communities living in Palestine enjoyed freedom of belief in the days of Islamic rule. They live in peace and security under Muslim administration and engaged freely in art and commerce. The Ottoman Empire established peace and security in the region for 500 years and it has proved impossible to rebuild that order brought about by the Ottomans. The freedoms and leniency enjoyed in Jerusalem and its surrounding area under Ottoman rule is described by one of Israel's ex-foreign ministers, Abba Ibn, as follows. Jerusalem and the Jewish nation suffered bloodshed and torture from the Romans and every other occupying force. Only after the conquest of Jerusalem by Sultan Yava Selim and its fortification by Suleiman the Magnificent did the Jewish nation discover what humanity, equality, and a peaceful life meant. Throughout the Muslim world, Muslims, Jews, and Christians lived together in peace and tranquility for centuries. The people of the book engaged in commerce and acquired property as they wished, engaged in the trade or profession of their choice, and were appointed to posts in the state administration and even in the Sultan's palace. The Balians, a family of architects in the Ottomans. In the Ottoman time, the people of the book enjoyed the freedom of thought and expression at the highest degree and made scientific and cultural achievements that are still with us today. One of these was the Balian family. The Balian family, who were of Armenian origin, were architects of the prominent structures that were built in the final periods of the Ottoman Empire. Their journey from Deverenk village of Kayseri to Istanbul turned the Balians into the architects of Istanbul's mosques that we view with admiration even today. The Balians were not Muslims, they were Christians. Yet the fundamental principle in the Ottomans was to recruit people not according to their religious beliefs, but to their talent, a concept referred to nowadays as a meritocracy. In this way, the Balian family was able to build mosques, Turkish baths and charities without encountering any difficulty regarding their religion and faith. Among these are monumental buildings such as Barracks of Rami, Dawud Pasha, Topçular, Selimiye and Kuleli, Nostretia and Dolmabahçe Mosques, Beyazit Tower, Dolmabahçe and Chiran Palace. This unequaled understanding of love and justice in Muslim lands was based on the Quran's morality. Muslim leaders who adopted such ethical standards always achieved security, peace, and justice in their domains. These administrations' priority was the public's happiness and prosperity. Therefore, they established systems that set the standard for future generations. When these same values of compassion, mercy, justice, understanding, modesty, patience, selflessness, and devotion derived from the Quran's morality begin to pervade today's societies, it will be possible to create a world order in which all people will find peace and security. Uniting against the threat of radicalism. <laughs> Radical tendencies, irrespective of their origin, are one of the most dangerous threats to world peace and security.
Radicalism means to advocate fundamental and sudden changes by means of uncompromising and hardline policies. Radicals seek such changes by employing cunning and often aggressive policies. One of radicalism's characteristic traits is the angry attitude visible in its adherent speeches, books, and demonstrations. Radical movements are dominated by blindly advocated taboos, instead of conscious behavior, and are indicative of mass psychology. Jonathan! Jonathan! Gel, 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 gel. This mass psychology, in turn, can get so out of control that people, who no longer know what they are doing or why, turn their aggression on others. This is a form of mass hysteria, and all too often, it can have deadly consequences. In an environment where love and understanding have ceased to exist, people begin to feel animosity toward different ideologies or races, without knowing what the other party really represents or believes. Ignorance enables radicalism to find new recruits, even though it is a harmful and destructive movement. Radicalism can emerge in some Islamic countries, just as it can in Christian and Jewish communities, and this fact must not be misused by those who predict a clash between the two civilizations. Misinformed or misguided people are vulnerable to extremist movements, whose philosophies they adopt without careful reflection. This is why education is perhaps the most essential aspect of the ideological fight against radicalism. When people are told of spiritual values, emphasizing the importance of the peace, then radical tendencies will swiftly disappear. The morality of the Quran inoculates believers from every kind of extremism. Radicalism is wholly incompatible with the way of life prescribed by God. God describes Muslims as those who speak nicely, refrain from conflict and fighting, are friendly and moderate toward even the fiercest opponents, and modest, patient, compassionate, and loving. In the Quran, God reveals that all of the prophets were moderate, gentle, and affectionate towards others. One verse describing the moral virtue of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, reads, It is a mercy from God that you were gentle with them. If you had been rough or hard of heart, they would have scattered from around you. Since Muslims are only responsible for announcing the Quran's morality, and since they are prohibited from being bullies or enforcers and are required to be softly spoken to even the cruelest tyrant, they cannot be extremists or radicals. Radicalism espouses and applies the exact opposite of all of these virtues. In addition, Muslims must use exceptionally polite and respectful language in talking to people who do not share their beliefs and ideas and telling them of the moral values of Islam. They never resort to force or threats. For their responsibility is limited to teaching others about the Quran's morality. The rest is entirely up to the conscience of those people. God reveals in the Quran the kind of language Muslims should use with other people. Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom and fair admonition and argue with them in the kindest way. Your Lord knows best who is misguided from his way, and he knows best who are guided. In part two of our documentary, A Call for Unity, 
We shall be looking at the common beliefs and values of the three faiths and the kind of intellectual struggle that members of these three faiths need to wage against atheistic philosophies. In addition, we shall also be discussing in this documentary the return to earth of the prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, in the end times, and the impact of that coming on these three great faiths. At the end of this series of documentaries, we will see how union and brotherhood between civilizations can easily be established. The three faiths have so much more in common than is commonly believed. By God's leave, once the faiths coalesce around these shared values, peace will be established very soon and the atmosphere of anarchy and conflict that some people are hoping for will be eliminated from the face of the earth.